sitting here just soaking up our first absolutely gorgeous day. You can actually like feel the heat of the sun. <laughs> and when this happens in the spring, it's just like a very welcome reminder that spring is just around the corner. Um, this week, little bits of grass started coming up this weekend I noticed and I was just like giddy with excitement I'm like it's happening <laughs> spring is coming I can't believe it but um, these are the beds that I planted in the fall with garlic and so I am greatly anticipating the day that I see them coming up I have such a hard time believing that they're even gonna come up because I planted these in I think October last year and so it's just so strange to put something in the ground and for it to bring new life in the spring so I'm definitely going to be documenting the day that I see those start popping up they're the first thing that come up around here in the spring so that is going to be an absolutely exciting day the horses are also starting to shed their winter coats which is a love-hate thing with me. I love it because it's a reminder that spring is coming, but I also absolutely despise it because of the fact that there is literally hair that just covers everything. Covers your hands, covers your clothes when you come out here to feed them. It gets crazy. And another reminder that spring is coming is this one has eye problems almost every stinking spring. And so I have um, gotten into a habit of just giving him um, dandelion root. Typically, I try to start this in um, like the end of February before it actually gets warm. But like this eye, you can see that he is just not opening it all the way. It's definitely swollen. It's been just like teary and really bothering him. So I had to put him on um, antibiotic ointment that you have to just like put in his eyelid. <laughs> Little Charles, you're a mess. So you have to just put this in their eyelid twice a day. So I've been doing that. And then I also have an herb called Eyebright. Um, and so you just make like the little tea on the stove steep it for a little bit and then you just do a compress on their eye and then I usually pull out everything when he has this I'm so used to it stinking every year so I'm like well here we go again it's spring so um, I also use um, euphrasia homeopath and arnica so I just do five um, pellets of each one of those and you can just put it into their water trough and that seems to do the trick fix his little eye problems but he is an old man he's pushing 30s but I was just like talking with him I was like you almost made it through another winter Charles how does it feel <laughs> he gets spoiled he gets his winter blanket and all the food that he'd ever want huh yeah you're a spoiled old man but you deserve it <laughs> So we started getting low on the goat alfalfa hay. So this weekend I went on the local classifieds around here and got some more alfalfa hay and a bunch of straw. I was able to get straw for like $2 a bale and they're double the size that I've been getting at the local ranch store. So I was pretty stoked about that. So we have a ton of straw now. I feel like we're officially ready to welcome the kids whenever. Um, our little goatee girl decides to have them and we have a barn full of alfalfa hay it's definitely interesting having a dairy animal because um, a lot of horse owners will feed their horses alfalfa hay I don't prefer it I think it has way too much protein in it and so I usually just do um, like a grass mix and then I just um, you can like supplement with alfalfa hay, but I don't like that to be the majority of their diet. But dairy animals are completely opposite, and she's only getting alfalfa hay. She gets alfalfa pellets, oats. So it's just interesting. I was just like laughing this week, and I'm like, they are like total opposites from horses. 
but it was a really good deal, super good price, and I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of hay on hand um, because they say as soon as the kids are born, it's good for them to just start munching and just mimicking exactly what mama's doing. So I wanna make sure that we had plenty of that on hand and we need straw to cover the entire um, structure, the little shed that we have for her for kidding season. So um, we're all stocked up, ready. I keep checking her <laughs> multiple times a day to see how she's doing and she's huge. So we were like watching her belly this weekend and you could totally see the little babies moving around. So it's exciting. I cannot wait. I am so excited to show you guys as soon as these babies are born. So I was coming back here to the back of our property. I realized today that it's um, been almost two years since I lost my Mustang, Eli. Um, so I just kind of wanted to see if there was anything growing. It was pretty wild. Um, we buried him in March two years ago and that summer there were wildflowers that started growing over his grave. And I just felt like it was the Lord's reminder that like he always brings beautiful things out of ashes. And so I just kind of wanted to come back here and reminisce and um, wow, yeah, just think about how God has completely renewed that area for me. Um, being able to buy a little baby colt last year and I look over and he's a little buckskin colt and Eli was buckskin and I by no means try to buy horses out of um, replacing old ones because you just can't. Um, every horse, it's like people, their personality is completely different. There's no duplicating that. Um, but it's pretty amazing to look over to my pasture and see this little baby that is just awaiting training and um, that I could have a really neat future with. Um, obviously time will tell as I train him and um, see if we mesh, see how he takes to training. Every horse is completely different. Some of them learn really quick. Um, we might bond super quick and it could be <laughs> complete opposite of that. And so I'm trying to not have expectations, but um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy what two years can bring. and. When you're in the thick of, you know, like morning and kind of shook up from something that you didn't expect at all to take place. And I know that this is just a horse. It's just an animal. Um, but to me, my horses mean a lot to me. And um, it was a pretty devastating situation. Um, it was something that I never expected. I thought that we had um, a big future ahead of us. And tons of life to live together and um it just didn't <laughs> it didn't work out that way definitely not what i had expected <laughs> they're curious so i've definitely had a thought as soon as i buried him i was like man i would love to grow something back here and the only unfortunate part is we don't have water back here at the back of our property so it would have to be something that's somewhat drought tolerant um, me and mom rolled around doing maybe some lavender back here it's definitely hard because the deer do eat a lot of things um, but I'm kind of sitting here pondering how I could um, plant something I don't know what it might be but I think it'd be super neat to grow something over his grave and remember him for sure. So the situation with um, Eli, this horse that I'm talking about, um, he was a pretty healthy horse. Um, I never really had big issues with him. He was a wild mustang and um, 
he usually mustangs are incredibly healthy horses they've had to adapt and they're super hardy never had any issues um, until I think it was February that I walked out one day and um, he just did not look right he was walking really strange it definitely seemed like neurological and so it just so happened that um, my hoof trimmer he was coming out and so he looked at him and he told me he was like you need to have a vet come out and come and look at this horse and so we called the vet the vet came out assessed him and it was a very solemn appointment um, I my gut told me that things weren't right and um, it ended up playing out that way and um, this was coming off of another big blow of losing um, my brother's horse. He was so much a part of our family. He was definitely a family member and um, he was an amazing horse that I will never ever be able to replace. Um, so the vet came out, looked at him, told me that he thought maybe um, he had a tumor on his brain, um, maybe he cracked his spine somehow, which is very strange for a horse. Um, we did have ice in his pasture pretty bad that year, and so I did wonder if he had like slipped on something somehow. Um, and so I just kind of watched him. I think it ended up being maybe a week or two from start to finish and um, there was one day that he got spooked and he tried to run and it's almost like his brain was not matching up with what his feet needed to do and um, I definitely knew that we needed to put him down at that point and that's never an easy decision that's never something that I take lightly um, it's incredibly sobering in something that is so so hard especially on young horses somehow it's easier on older animals because you know that they've lived a good life and um, it just was not not like that he was I think 10 years old and that's pretty much in a horse's prime so that was a giant blow and after that I pretty much decided that I would probably never buy a horse again because my heart could not handle it and then here comes Smokey into my life last year, and here I am with a little one-year-old. He's going to be one in April. It's just so cool. So, yeah, I think um, if you're in the middle of a season that you never thought, um, don't lose heart and just know that um, God renews things. He restores things, and he doesn't take us down to our lowest lows to leave us there. So, we'll... Little tidbit.